I'm Dr. Daryl Rich with Core Chiropractic and Wellness in downtown Roanoke. Vitamin D has been in the news a lot lately. Research studies are pointing to it as an immune booster, a COVID fighter, a diabetes preventer. And this one very important vitamin may be the key link to the health of most of the American population. But yet most of us are still consistently deficient. So today I want to highlight vitamin D deficiencies and particularly how do they occur how do you keep your levels at a range that's optimal? And particularly as we're struggling with against this COVID virus, how are you gonna prepare yourself for the next few months? In several other previous articles, we talked about how you can, um, sun exposure can help and boost your vitamin D, but how you can really struggle with it if you're not getting enough from the sun. You know, if you're not exposing enough skin, if you're using too high of an SPF sunscreen, or if you're not getting enough of that midday sun, you may actually be deficient in your vitamin D that you would like to be getting from it. Even environmental factors such as smog and cloud cover or residing in a higher latitude will reduce your vitamin D production. So just be careful with that one. You know, additionally, if you're kind of a darker skin, right? If you uh, are, have a little bit higher melanin production than others, you could also be vitamin D deficient. Those with lighter skin often can be in the sun just for 10 minutes and have enough vitamin D production, while those with darker skin sometimes have to be in the sun for over 30 minutes. So if you're relying upon the sun for only your, your vitamin D, you may need to supplement if you're somebody who particularly has some darker skin tones. Now let's look at dietary intake of vitamin D. You know, certain foods that have naturally been uh, occurring with high vitamins and, uh, vitamin D, like fish, meat, eggs, uh, those are really great foods to be taking in and are very helpful for that vitamin D production. Now, be cautious not to source your vitamin D from foods that contain mostly vitamin B, uh, D2, not D3. That's the one we want. Vitamin D2 is not. So foods like mushrooms and fortified drinks like rice milk or almond milk uh, sometimes don't have the effective D3. They have the ineffective D2. Now, the intake of co-nutrients are also very helpful. Um, key examples would be like magnesium, vitamin K, boron, zinc. All of those are needed to absorb vitamin D properly. And on the other hand, if you're taking in vitamins like vitamin A, uh, that is something that can actually block your vitamin D production. You know, vitamin A is found in things like liver. Um, it can also be found in, um, you know, in I think some supplements. So you got to be careful with some of the vitamin, uh, multivitamins can have high amounts of vitamin A. So be cautious with that. Also, if you're taking drugs like a statin or a prednisone or a weight loss drug, those can also block your vitamin D absorption. But how do you enhance vitamin D? Well, first of all, take it with a meal. That's one of the most important ones, particularly one that's high in fat. Something like an olive oil or avocado in that meal can be very helpful. You might also try a probiotic, particularly if you're somebody who struggles with some digestion issues. It can be really helpful for that uh, vitamin D production absorption. So there's a few reasons why your vitamin, uh, vitamin D levels may be low. You know, if you're older, unfortunately, as we old, get age, our skin just doesn't produce vitamin D like we want. Often your kidneys are able also not to convert vitamin D into its active form. If you're a smoker, if you have a high BMI, you may be one of those groups that really needs to benefit or will, really will benefit from vitamin D supplementation. Um, if you have somebody that struggles with a digestive disorder, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, uh, leaky gut, celiac disease, all of these uh, conditions will affect the absorption of vitamin D and it's something you'll be very careful with. If you have a liver issue, a pancreas problem, if you've had a gallbladder problem, uh, if you've had bariatric surgery where they've bypassed the small intestine, again, you may struggle with vitamin D production and you may have to supplement uh, with a, a, a good quality vitamin D3. So if you struggle with those, you might also want to even talk with your physician just to kind of help you properly understand what is the, the best line of uh, offense for you. How can you keep your vitamin D levels uh, really high? So now let's talk about what is going to boost your vitamin D levels. We touched earlier on co-nutrients. Co-nutrients are nutrients that work together to accomplish a bodily process. If one co-nutrient is limited, either missing or just not plentiful enough, then the process might also be limited. For example, if your body needs magnesium for vitamin D metabolism. Without sufficient magnesium, the amount of vitamin D that can be metabolized or used by your body is limited. Most studies point to over, uh, you need 50% more vitamin D 
if you're not using magnesium with it. When you compare somebody who's taking magnesium and taking potassium, they need almost 244% more vitamin D. Bone health is another place where we see this kind of uh, co-nutrient importance. Uh, bone health depends upon metabolism of calcium, vitamin D, protein, magnesium. You need all of these working together to produce a strong and healthy bone. So if you're worried about your, your bone health and you've been recommended to take calcium, I would highly suggest you take those other with it and add some vitamin D and, and magnesium, like we said, to support that calcium regimen. You may also want to add protein to increase your muscle mass because if you increase muscle mass, that's been shown to increase your bone mass. Um, if you've been really recently tested for low vitamin D for the first time, I also have some troubleshooting tips for you. If you've been consistently taking the supplemental dose of vitamin D, the same thing over and over again, and now you've experienced a lower than expected vitamin D level, it's possible that there's been a change in your diet, uh, perhaps behavior, your health, even the environment over the last few months, and that's led to reduced levels. Um, likewise, a recent illness or even the time of the day that it was tested can negatively impact your vitamin D levels. Uh, your vitamin D levels can actually drop 20% in the morning and the evening versus if you took that sample during the middle of the day. So before you make any changes to your supplemental regimen, I would highly suggest you at least retest it more than once. Um, if you're having difficulty increasing your levels, uh, you may find increasing your dose, taking it with the largest and even fattiest meal of your day to be helpful. Uh, you may again try to optimize those co-nutrients that we talked about. Now, if your low levels persist, you, again, you probably need to talk with some type of health provider um, and we may look at your gut, uh, you know, the health of your gut absorption, any medications that are blocking your vitamin D production. And again, that's kind of the purpose of why we're here. This is what Core Chiropractic is all about, is that we're here to help you become healthier than you've ever been. And anytime that you need to talk with us, feel free. You can always contact us. Leave us a comment in some of the, the, the below the, the video here. We'll be happy to get with you. Or feel free to stop by our office. Um, you can come by and look at our website. There's more resources there available at coreroanoke.com. Um, like I said, we're here to help you guys. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.